Every change will be the end of an era, an apocalypse. Every voyage an uprooting, and every future death. You do not imagine the future. You forget the past. Your memory is our forgetting. You have no ecology of time. The unborn children will walk in your graves as if you have never lived. And when, when you leave, leave this place, place there will be no one left, left to grieve you. When I was just five or six, I imagined my shadow lived a life all its own. While everyone assured me it was a faithful mirror of the present, I would catch it changing out of the corner of my eye, always the reluctant slave forced to move in a cruel pantomime of an uninspired life. Worried it might abandon me, I tried to live in a more interesting way, to keep it entertained. But the truth is, I lacked the imagination and soon fell into the same routines as before. It was only at the end of the day, away from the sun's unrelenting glare, that my shadow could breathe, freed at last to join a world just like itself, celebrating the communion of night. This is where my real personality was being made, while I lay asleep, and as I grew older, it was difficult to shake the feeling that I was the one doing the following. My shadow, shadow, made to feel as I moved through the world, some kind of connection between things which seemed so distant. The ancients had a word for it, this dark feeling of unity. They called it in the morning that we could no longer dream in pictures. From that night on, we would dream only in words or the binary codes of our computers, the zeros and ones we exchanged in place of information. We were the children of Fritz Lang and Microsoft, from Bill Gates, we learned that the global village has only one mayor. And from Fritz Lang, we learned that the pictures of our dreams could be seen only when we were awake, and that they would be sent to us from the city of Nets, the dream factory, the place they call home. 
Pangaliwan. Last night I had a dream about my father. He was very old with sad, dark eyes that seemed haunted by the truth he was about to discover. He turned our basement into a crazy kind of science lab with test tubes and machines everywhere designed to make new human beings. He was muttering to himself that the body has openings to admit the world, the ears for hearing, the eyes for sight, but he was making a body whose entire surface would be an opening. He was making a body that couldn't keep the outside outside, a body that said yes to everything. And then I saw who he was making realized I was watching for the first time the circumstances of my own birth. future had only recently disappeared. The movie palaces were full with people starved for pictures. No matter how many we viewed, we longed for more, as if our eyes were a rectum, capable only of ejecting movies, instead of a door for welcoming them. Now that we could no longer dream in our own worlds, the faces of Hollywood were more important than ever. The stories of these films no longer concerned us. They were the old stories, the ones which had circulated since the beginning of time, 
of sex and illness and power, of how the world was made and we along with it, and of how we would return at the end of our days to a moment of light glimpsed by strangers in the night sky, a brief incandescent flash illuminating the void of space. Thank you. 